I want to take a look at one more distance problem, and that's the distance between skew lines. So I've given you two lines here, and I've told you that they're skew. We discussed earlier how we would prove they were skew. We would rule out the other two possibilities. They're not parallel, and they're not intersecting. Okay. If I want to find the distance between skew lines, by definition, that's going to be the, dis the shortest of the distance between a pair of points, one on each line. So what I have to do is with these lines, if they're skew, I wouldn't just pick a point on this line and a point on that line and calculate that distance. I'd look for the pair of points that are the closest together, that have the shortest distance between them, and calculate that. That sounds like a big task because I'd have to find the closest points. Okay. There's a nifty shortcut because it turns out that that's the distance between the parallel planes that these lines lie in. So when we discussed skew lines, we had stated that they would always lie in parallel planes, and we're going to take advantage of that here. So I'm going to draw myself a picture. I'm going to say this is plane 1, and plane 1 contains line 1. Now, I don't have an equation for the planes, but since these lines are skew, I know that parallel planes that contain them exist. That's all I need right now. All right, and then I'm going to say this is plane 2, and it contains line 2. Now, we've discussed how we find the distance from a point to a plane. I haven't discussed the distance between two parallel planes, but basically all I do is I pick a point on this plane, and then I find the distance from that point to this plane. So finding the distance between two parallel planes amounts to finding the distance between a point and a plane. You just have to pick the point. So let's go ahead and pick a point. So if plane 2 contains line 2, I think the simplest point to pick would be this, my starting point right here. I'm just going to call that point P. So that's 4, 0, 3, written as a point. So now I want to find the distance from that point to this plane. Now, what makes this a little bit trickier is that I don't have an equation for my plane. But I know the first thing I would do is I would pick a point that was on this plane. Okay. So I think probably the simplest point to pick here, I'll call it point Q, would just be 1, 2, 0. That's just what I get if I plug in 0 for T in line 1. Okay. So I know that I can now connect those points so that I've formed this vector QP. And then what I want to do to find the distance between these planes is take the normal, and since these planes are parallel, they're going to share a normal direction, and that normal is going to determine a line. And I just want to project QP onto that line. So I'm looking for P, which would be the projection of QP onto the line determined by the shared normal. Okay. Fantastic. So I just need to know what this normal vector is. Well, when we had an equation for a plane, we were able to pick out the normal vector from the plane. Here, I don't have an equation for the plane. But I do have two vectors that I know are parallel to the plane. Because these lines are contained in the planes, and therefore they're parallel to the planes. So the direction vectors for both lines are going to be parallel to the plane. And since these are parallel planes, the direction vector for each line is parallel to both. So I'm going to say V1 is the direction vector for my first line. And remember, that's just going to be its components will be the numbers that I'm multiplying by t. So that would be 1, 2, negative 3. V2 will be the direction vector for the second line. That's what I'm multiplying by t. So that's 1, 1, negative 1. Now, if both of these are parallel to the two planes, their cross product will be normal. So my n is simply going to be V1 crossed with V2. 
So I can't pick it out from the equation for my plane, but I can pick out two parallel vectors from the equations for my lines, and then I can cross them to get the normal. So I think we've gotten all the information we need from our lines. I'm going to go ahead and erase them to clear some space on the board here. Let's calculate that normal vector. So if n is v1 crossed with v2, that's going to be a symbolic determinant, i, j, k, 1, 2, negative 3, 1, 1, negative 1. So we get some i's. The number of i's is negative 2 minus a negative 3. So that's negative 2 plus 3 is 1. For the j's, remember, that's going to be negative, so we take the opposite. So I'm going to calculate it backwards. That's going to give me negative 3 minus negative 1. Negative 3 plus 1 is going to be negative 2. And then for the k's, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So my normal vector is 1, negative 2, negative 1. Let's calculate qp. So let's see, that's going to be 4 minus 1 is 3. 0 minus 2 gives me negative 2. 3 minus 0 gives me 3. So now I can calculate my projection. P was the projection of QP onto N. I know that's going to give me a multiple of N. To get the scalar, that's going to be QP dotted with N over n dotted with itself. So we're getting a multiple of 1, negative 2, negative 1. On top, we've got 3, negative 2, 3, dotted with 1, negative 2, 1. And on bottom, we've got 1, negative 2, 1, dotted with itself. I'm sorry, 1, negative 2, negative 1. All right, so let's see. That's going to be a multiple of 1, negative 2, negative 1. On top, we've got 3 plus 4 minus 3 is going to give me 4. On bottom, we've got 1 plus 4 plus 1 is 6. I can reduce that to 2 thirds of 1, negative 2, negative 1. So that's my projection really easy to get lost in these calculations. So I look back at my picture and I say, oh, I just calculated that. What did I want? I wanted the distance between these planes because that's the distance between my skew lines. So I can say the distance is just the magnitude of that projection, which will be the absolute value of that scalar. Since it's positive, that's just going to be 2 thirds, times the magnitude of this vector which is root 6. So I get 2 root 6 all over 